Hey everybody, Scott Detweller here. I'm sure hypothetically we've all faced a situation where we maybe have a hard drive full of great art we've created from mid-journey, stable diffusion, and places, but it's all tiny. It's like 786 pixels on the long edge because we can't get bigger. Or maybe out of mid-journey, it's maybe 2,000 pixels, but that's not enough to print or enough to edit in Photoshop to any great level of satisfaction. But what if we can go to sleep, hypothetically we sleep, we wake up and these things are like 12,000 pixels on the long edge or bigger. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, let me show you today how to do that using a free tool. Now I've covered this tool on the channel before. It's called Chainer and it's free. It's on GitHub and it's open source. So there's nothing secrety going on. There's no spyware or anything like that. If you look at it, you can see how it's made. So you judge for yourself if you want to install it. Be aware though, if you're running Mac OS, that older versions of the Mac OS are going to have trouble with this, just like Mac OS has trouble with a lot of things when it ages you're not alone. So just be aware that it's a problem and it's one that they're actually working on. Uh, so if you're running something older, be aware that they are looking into it. Uh, but I wanted to show you that application today and how to set it up. It's very easy to do. And then when you go to sleep again, hypothetically, and you wake up in the morning, you'll have a hard drive that's even more full, but this time of giant images you can actually edit and play with. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, to start out, I have five images that are my GFP GAN folder. This means that they have survived the face fixing algorithm and I need to now upscale them because they're not big. So if I go and I change this view so you can see what the details are, you see they're all 512 by 768 or 704, something tiny, uh, and I need to upscale these. So these are made in stable diffusion on a local machine, uh, which is why they're tiny, uh, and they're, they're not very big. So if we click on it, that's 100% scale, um, and uh, it's a beautiful image, but I wanna make it bigger because I wanna be able to edit it in Photoshop. So what do I do? Well, let's take this directory and let's run it through Chainer. So if we go into Chainer here, again, this is an open source application. I'll link to it below. And this is what I use for everything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through all these models. So what we're gonna do is load the image file iterator. Very simple. It's just gonna load this giant platen for us to work inside of. And it hands us a few things. First of all, the directory where our images are sitting that we need to upscale. And I'm going to go ahead and specify the image directory we talked about a second ago as our image upscaler directory. So now this is going to work through all these. Note that this will work through every subdirectory as well. So if you have a bunch of subdirectories, they are also going to be upscaled. And you can use this relative path here if you need to have those in the target directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the upscale image and load it in. If you hover over these, by the way, you can get information about them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the image. We're going to push that into the image plugin here. Well, let me do this. What I'm going to do now is to load the model. Now, the model is what is doing the work. So you want to load the model that's appropriate. If you're upscaling anime images, you want to grab a GAN that is used for anime and so on. But remember, the GAN is the, the thing that generates the images to convince itself whether or not it looks good. So it should generate really clean results. But again, they aren't trained to fix the world's problems across the board. You need to get the one that you need specifically. Again, in the previous video, I've listed where to grab these. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to load the model, but I'm not gonna load it in the iterator. I'm gonna put it out here because I only need to load it once. I don't need to load it every single image. And we're just gonna connect it. Again, I'm gonna click on the model and you'll see here we have a bunch of models they've already uploaded. Um, there are a whole lot of these available. Uh, the real ESR GAN uh, X4 Plus I like, and I like the Ultra Sharp as well. But for this one, I'm gonna use the real ESR GAN and just do this. This is really good with faces. Um, it's really good up, upscaling humans. I really like the way that it works in general. Okay, so we did this. Now let's load an image in here uh, just as an example. Kind of see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and just load an image in so you can kind of see what it's affecting here. Let's go ahead and just grab one of these. That's going to be one of the ones we're upscaling. We can see it here. And if we plug it into this image, we can see now that we have a 2048 by 2560 result from this upscale. And that's great, but that's not big enough. So let's just duplicate this and put it here again. And now we'll run this image through this one. And we're going to use the same model again. And now we're at 10,240 by 8,192, and you could really just keep doing this. If you wanted to, you could run it through this again. Now note, this is going to take a while and it's gonna take up a lot of hard drive space, but for me, this is about the same size as my Sony A7R4, so I'm quite pleased with this. What I need to do now is to save it. So we're just gonna grab a save image. I'm going to save the image here. 
Now, what are we going to name it? Let's just use the original file name and chuck it in there like that. So now the file names are going to be the same. Yes, we have some lines coming across there. So for you, those of you who are OCD, uh, you're going to be playing this with, with this for a while. But uh, in general, you get the idea of what's happening. Uh, so we don't need this individual image. Now that we've kind of tested what we're going to do, we're going to put this image into this socket here. So now every image that goes through that is in this directory is going to be upscaled once, upscaled again. And what's it going to do with it? Well, we need to plop it in somewhere. So let's go ahead and set the directory. We want to pick these. And I actually have a place called upsize. So it's my AI artwork upsize. And that's where all these are going to drop. And it's just going to upsize and drop them in here. Now about a week or so ago, this got a major upgrade for speed. So here we are inside of Affinity Photo, just for a little variety of sake. And you can see that pixel measurement wise, we're way over 10,000 pixels on that edge and over 8,000 pixels on the short edge. So plenty of room for editing and manipulation of the image. And again, the different GAN you use will determine how sharp or how manipulated each of these details are uh, when you're working with that. Oh, I wanted to do a video on this because I will let my local install of Stable Diffusion run overnight and produce say 500 images. Go out the next morning and cherry pick them and decide which ones I really love. But again, they're small, so I need to upscale them. And this is how I do it. I'm all, I move them all into one directory and then set it up, let it run and come back and they're all usable image sizes so I can work with them. I'm sure all these different services are eventually going to be offer upscale as part of their product suite. But right now we don't have that option. So this video may be old and may age very quickly, uh, but it's still a great way to take any image you have and upscale it where you want to go. And there's a lot of other tools that are coming to Chainer as well. Uh, what's also great about this tool is the ability to kind of blend different images together. Uh, so if you're trying to do manipulations again in a batch in mass that are all in different directories, this is a fantastic tool. And again, it's free and it'll run on pretty much any computer as long as again, you're running the newest version of Mac OS as a PC user. I really don't have to worry about any of that. So he has a discord channel uh, that he's listed here on his website. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, this is rolling out constantly and he's very responsive. So I jumped on there last night and Joey was on there, but you have really nice installs here for everything. And again, if you want to be a little more geeky, you can go ahead and jump right into the code and play with it as you would like. The other benefit of the solution, it's pretty much the only one out there that's still in active development. I found other tools that were really good, but they haven't been touched in two or three years or longer. Uh, so Joey's been really responsive. Uh, when I asked him questions, he was able to answer them and uh, really kind of helped me with some issues I was having with the best way to approach. He's like putting the model inside the iterator, for example. He's like, don't do that. There's no need to load the model with each image. I'm like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Everybody take care. Stay safe. I'll catch you all next time.